is a video about Comet Ison. In the past few weeks, I made two videos about Comet Ison, which have gotten a lot of attention. This is my channel, and if you uh, scroll down, we will get to the videos that are making a lot of headlines, and that is this video on how Comet Ison parallels the movie very eerily, uh, the movie called The Day the Earth Stood Still. Now, people who have watched movies uh, can understand that, you know, cell phones were in movies first, if you remember Dick Tracy. Um, and so there are a lot of things, including 9-11, uh, that were, were first portrayed in movies well before they ever happened. And so what happens in movies, especially when they're eerily parallel, is very important. And the two or three incidences in this movie are that the uh, comet is on a hyperbolic orbit, that the uh, comet ends up being not a comet, and that the uh, beginning of the movie starts with uh, a fear of uh, viruses that can live in extreme locations such as a moon of Jupiter or perhaps a comet. Now, this image here is what got everybody really interested uh, in Comet Ison and where all the conspiracy theories uh, or, or uh, conspiracy facts uh, have started to begin. And the uh, interesting thing uh, about uh, uh, this image here, well, this is not loading. Uh, and so what I'm going to do uh, is, is just leave the link here so you can come and see the, uh, uh, the movie. But the uh, point that I'm making is, let me just stop this, is when you go to the Hubble image that's linked in this video, um, you are going to get this, okay, this screen. Now, they're not linking it to where the actual comet is. You have to know what the coordinates are over here. So if you watch these coordinates, you're going to watch me go to the comet. Okay, here we are. This kidney bean shaped uh, sort of image and you see the, the coordinates uh, there at this point in order for you to find it yourself. Now, this looks uh, like what you'd expect perhaps a comet to look, just not very, uh, just blurry. But then when you darken it three times, one, two, three, you get this, this image which looks eerily like a spacecraft or a a non-natural image. And strangely enough, guess what? Look what it says here. Why does this image look strange? Now this is new, okay? When I made the last video a few weeks ago, this link was not here. So if we click on this link, here they have a long explanation as to what they did and why they did it. And um, uh, let me just get cut to the chase of, of what they of what they claim here, and uh, it may or may not be true, but uh, you got to hear me out until the end, because I'm going through data points here. Now they are saying that because the Hubble telescope is moving, and because the comet is moving, that you're going to expect to see these streaks, and uh, and in a pattern, it kind of goes up. And down and so in the pattern that the Hubble moves is the reason why you have these streaks and the exposures here are all the same 440 seconds and so my question is this um, why uh, do you not have a streak here if it's also the same amount of exposure it's very unlikely to anybody that the camera of the Hubble telescope is actually moving in the in opposite directions, exactly on a head-on collision, for you to have a pinpoint in the same exposure mat, uh, time. It is very unlikely, let's face it folks, that the Hubble telescope camera lens 
and the Comet Ison are on collision course for any period of time for 440 seconds in order to get a dot image, okay? That's not likely. It's, it's, you know, so here you have something that's not likely and you have a lot of people making other videos who are parroting this information, like parrots. Um, they have not shown me, please show me just one other comet with this, with this uh, uh, normal parallax uh, uh, artifact or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, expected occurrences, okay? This is what you're saying. Okay, so let's just presume that this is correct. So what does that mean? So let's look at what that means, okay? But first, let me let you listen to what's coming out of the horse's mouth. The actual guy who did this, and they exposed themselves before it was ever exposed by BP Earthwatch. Uh, he brought it to light. But they told us in this uh, Hubble Hangout, and uh, I want you to, to, to watch this. So that's an artifact of the camera as well. It's just a bad column and you know, it doesn't gather data. So this kind of shows you what we're up against here. You know, cosmic rays, stars, bad, you know, bad columns. Um, you know, just this isn't really a problem, the gap. No, and you just move it. You just move it. Got a moving target. So, you know, you can see that we do dither it. You know, when we shift the images, that helps with all these artifacts. You see between these two, the gap moves. Yep. That's called a dither. So it helps not only with the uh, the gap, but also any artifacts like this bad column. The gaps, he says, are two chips things like that. side by side. So with the observing strategy, I mentioned it's kind of a craft. You, you know, with five exposures, you know, a very limited amount of time, we're trying to gather color information um, and also get, you know, come up with a strategy. To now, what did he just say with this kind of a craft? Okay, well, so that's what happens with YouTube. Sometimes it comes on and off. Uh, you can't really predict how these things work. Let's see, up here or okay. Hot pixels or things like that. So with the observing strategy, I mentioned it's kind of a craft. You, you know, with five exposures, you know, a very limited amount of time, we're trying to gather color information um, and also get, you know, come up with a strategy that allows us to get rid of all these artifacts. You need all these extra all these uh, multiple exposures to have the leverage to remove it. And it gets to a point that came up, I saw in the Facebook group, um, you know, somebody was saying, well, why don't you just get a deep image of this background and then wait for the comet to come into view and then get a nice image of that? Well, the simple answer to that, you know, that would be great. It's just that we actually talked about that. It's just that that's twice as expensive. That would take two orbits, other orbits instead of one. And, you know, when you're an amateur in your backyard, you got all night to do whatever you want. With the Hubble telescope, you know, the comet of the century, they can't afford it. It's a highly, you know, sought after resource, you know, lots of competition. So we have to, we have to keep what we do to an absolute minimum. I did not know that. You know, so if we come up with a strategy to do it in one orbit, then we don't want to spend two orbits on it because we'd like to do something else with that other orbit. So this was a strategy that was made it a little bit more work for me and for Zoll but um, allowed us in one orbit of Hubble time, which is pretty modest, to produce a, a typically deep Hubble image that has a com has the comet in it, all in one orbit. So um, certainly if we had a second orbit or expended that, we could do it, you know, do it even better, but we were pretty pleased with the output. And uh, so just to kind of keep moving along, here's sort of a cleaned up image. You know, once I, I've worked on it and kind of cleaned out all the artifacts, you know, here's the one single image that is closest to the final product, but of course it's still not the final product because we haven't combined the two, the two colors. Um, and here's if I just combine the cleaned images from just the visual band, you see the three streaks there. And, uh, and then again, just a comparison of all the junk that got moved out. So this is just sort of comparing the needle in the haystack here, you know, cleaning out all the, the junk from the image. And, and then here's, here's if I did it poorly, here's what you might, you know, get from a clumsy, kind of like the other one, where you're actually unfortunately rejecting a lot of the comet, you know, so, so basically what I had to produce for Zolt was a whole bunch of these, what, we, what you're looking at right now, of those five frames, and then he had a, I'll let him talk about, you know, he had the, an equally tough task of, you know, combining the images, that the color filters, so that we'd have colorful stars and galaxies, but then in a sense, removing the, co the comet, but then putting the comet that you see back, you know, here, back into the image. Um, but 
but there's nothing, there's no hocus pocus here really. I mean, as you see, this right here, the no image, hocus pocus image of comet ice on against a, a deep background of stars and galaxies. So, um, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing kind of constructed about this image. The comet mm -hmm. was right there, and yes, we cleaned out artifacts and cosmic rays. And also, in a sense, chose just one position of the comet instead of putting all five, because of course, the comet doesn't really look like what I'm showing right now, right? Um, we know um, the comet looks, you know, like it does in any one of these single frames, like this one here. So it is a so, like he just admitted, the comet doesn't look like that. He also uh, uh, admitted uh, or said that. Uh, uh, they're combining these images so that they can have uh, 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 color images of the uh, comet Ison. And if you listen to the elaborate, the elaboracy of what they claim to be doing, which are combining three different images from five different exposures, and those three different images show the comet in three different positions, and they're layering these images together, supposedly, to get a true image of the comet and get colored galaxies and background when he just says the comet doesn't look like that. And uh, let's just hear that uh, one more time. Constructed about this image, the comet was right there, and yes, we cleaned out artifacts and cosmic rays, and also, in a sense, chose just one position of the comet instead of putting all five, because of course, the comet doesn't really look like what I'm showing right now, right? Okay, so here it is, right there. Now, this is what he is admitting that the comet doesn't look like that. Okay, so let's just say that they're telling the truth about this parallax which uh, I already explained why I do not believe that because of th their over explanation. First of all, when somebody, it's known that a liar will use more words than somebody who's telling the truth. If you ask somebody a question who's lying, they're going to give you twice as many words and investigators can simply count the words and know that somebody's lying. Okay, and in the same way, they've got all these different videos up, all these different uh, explanations up, and it's the only comet that they've ever done this with, the comet of the century, and they're explaining how these are three different exposures, all the same 440 seconds, and yet this one is a pinpoint, and that the only way that would be possible is if the comet and the Hubble telescope are an direct head-on collision for those 440 seconds, not going to be likely, folks, not going to be likely. Okay, and let me tell you, uh, let me also give you an example of what they did. Okay, now I went to Photoshop. Now, I'm not a Photoshop expert. You all know that who've seen my videos, uh, and yet I've been using Photoshop probably since before most of you have been born. Okay, but uh, I use it from experience. I don't sit there and uh, take uh, years of classes. Okay, so here you can see the history. Here's the image. Let's just say this is the uh, image put out uh, by the uh, uh, NASA, uh, and, and they're giving you all those different explanations and parallax and exposures and this and that, and this is the image that they uh, give you, okay? Now, if you look behind the image, okay, this is what they're saying they did. Now, I'm just going to go backwards in my history here. Um, to show you what's in that image. Now you see, okay, now I know this is a little funny and I don't mean to uh, disparage anybody. I'm simply using this as an example, okay? Let's just say that there is a, uh, a, a guy taking a picture while he's walking, okay? He's walking across the room and, and, and up and down a, uh, a, 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 Chinese, a Japanese bridge, okay? And so what, what he does, he takes a picture here, takes a picture there, takes a picture here. And so he's got these three pictures, right? And rather than taking one of the pictures, that, which would be a representation, either one of these three, uh, and, and giving us a clear shot of it, what, the, what, what we're expected to believe that somehow it's good for us, good for science, scientific, to do this with the picture, to simply 
blur it out, combine the images, and, and feed us this, and explain it with all this gobbledygook, right? And even if the gobbledygook is true, then this is worse, right? This is worse. What's worse? The gobbledygook that they would, that they would uh, uh, take three images and combine it, uh, uh, you know, either that's a lie or this is the truth. And if this is the truth, then this is a lie because they're concealing with a cloud. A cloud is, you know, is, is a coma. Now, let's just go back to the Hubble telescope because I tried to find other images like Comet Ison. I mean, you figure the Hubble telescope has been around since the 80s or something and, uh, it, and it must have seen and taken pictures of dozens and dozens of comets, right? Or at least a dozen of them. And um, so when I go to uh, the Hubble telescope, I can't find any other image uh, that is reminiscent of, of, a, of, a, of a three exposures. Now here's another comet. This is a Comet Hartley. And uh, this is a, a, a NASA image by one of the guys who combined Dr. Jang Jang Lee, he's one of the guys who combined the image in, in Ison in that other video. Now you see this crystal clear, crisp image. You can see what the comet looks like. Why, for the comet of the century, they are not giving us images like this? Uh, what, is, what is up with this, with this comet? Now, uh, if we look at this comet, here's comet Hyakatek. I'm not pronouncing this correct, but uh, this was taken with a binoculars, okay? Uh, and this is also on the Hubble telescope site, and, uh, and this wasn't taken with the Hubble telescope. Uh, this was uh, taken with 25 by 150 binoculars, uh, dubbed the Great Comet of 1996, becoming visible to the naked eye in March. Now, if you look at this image, this is far better than the Hubble telescope image. And here, this guy was sniveling and crying about, oh, the work was so difficult for him and how he's got to uh, uh, take out all the, 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 the background and he's got to combine the image in order to give us color and he, he needs, he needs a, this other guy's help who has the equally tough... Ta here they've got billions of dollars. They're sitting in, in, in plush... Uh, offices with the with the best perks of any government uh, uh, organization, and they're crying and sniveling, while this guy takes a better picture with a binocular. Okay, so what's going on with Comet Ison, NASA, the Hubble Telescope? We know that the Deep Space Impact uh, uh, satellite uh, became. Uh, uh, non-operational uh, right before it was supposed to take pictures of the Comet Ison. And so there's something that's just not adding up. Now let's go to the Hubble site uh, and, and look at the two pictures that we have of Comet Ison that are put out by the Hubble. Now it's this image here and this image here. Now if you look at this image, anybody who knows Photoshop, look at this image, okay? Look at this blur, this perfectly round radial blur. Okay, now I'm not a Photoshop expert, but I know Photoshop experts can duplicate this blur. It's unnatural. There is no way that the comet is symmetrically glowing this perfect circle blur uh, uh, out of it. And if you look at this forward jetting, right, comets are supposed to be spinning, right? And if it's spinning, how is it going to have a, a jet uh, uh, symmetrically going in in one direction all at the same time uh, uh, it, it doesn't it that doesn't make much sense either it would it would look uh, uh, perhaps different and I don't believe this is a natural uh, uh, circle here this is created by Photoshop now also here if you look here you'll detect there is there is what appears to be not as clear as the other one. The other one is, is, is done basically so you could know that they did it. I mean, they want you to know that there's something wrong with this image. Um, that's just how uh, secret societies work. They like to give you enough information to make you, um, let us say, accountable for the information and yet dupe you. And uh, so if you go to, go to Photoshop, uh, Photoshop experts uh, can 
can uh, duplicate this better f for us and uh, make a video about it. But um, let's just try that again. Okay. And now if you look at this image here, this is of the uh, image that wasn't as Photoshopped. Now if you, if I go down with what I played around with it here, now you see, you could see the, now if you play with the blur, you can get, you can get a different, uh, you can get a different blur. Now let's just go here with the layers, layer style. Um, bump, bump, filter. That's where we're going. And blur. Now let's go with a radial blur. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, people who, who know Photoshop know how to do this better than I do and know how to duplicate this blur. This is not natural. And so, what do we have here? Uh, when when all is said and done uh, when all is said and done is we have a lot of hocus pocus uh, we have uh, NASA claiming uh, at the onset that this is the, the comet of the century that they uh, want all telescopes uh, on the planet to be on Comet Ison when it arrives that they have uh, strategies and, and, and whatnot for for looking at Comet Ison and yet they're they're not giving us clear data, and uh, and so there's there's something weird going on. I'm not making any claims about anything other than this, that the images put out uh, of, of Comet Ison, uh, of the parallax image, is uh, spurious. Their methods are non-scientific if they're telling the truth, and the Hubble uh, images of the uh, comet uh, are are not uh, normal either. They they've been blurred, uh, uh, unnaturally blurred. This is right here is an unnatural blur. You see, this looks somewhat normal. This looks like Photoshop. And if they did it here, and they're admitting, actually, you know, if you just <laughs> you know, listen to what they're telling you, they're admitting that it doesn't look like that. And yet that is the image that they put out. And so what I want to let everybody know is to question everything. Uh, don't get uh, overly excited and to uh, have faith because that's the only thing that is going to protect you. Thank you.